Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Brilliant. This review will feature spoilers. Madam Web is a train wreck. I try to resist going with really over-the-top negative rhetoric in the actual content of my videos. So many people work hard on these films and TV shows, and I want to be respectful of that, even when I'm giving something a negative review. But this movie, this really pushes that to the breaking point. Because to be honest, there's just no way that Sony Pictures should have allowed this film to be released in its present state, period. In one of my old Morbius videos, I compared that movie to what would be called a minimum viable product in tech, a product that functions just enough to be technically usable in early tests and stuff. That's how Morbius felt. It hit all the basic notes it needed to hit in the most bare bones, uninteresting ways possible. But now, here I am, a year or two later, to tell you that Madam Web makes Morbius look like Spider-Man 2. If Morbius was scraping the bottom of the barrel, Madam Web is digging through the floorboards with its bare hands. So what happened here? I honestly don't know. This will be a fascinating film to read about the production of someday. But for now, we can only look at the text itself. I remember all of my encounters with you, Madam Web. I want nothing to do with you. So Madam Web is clearly a movie that was radically reshaped during its production. And nowhere is that more obvious than in its villain. Ezekiel is loosely based on the early 2000s Amazing Spider-Man character of the same name, and here he's just absolutely atrocious. I can't even count the number of times I've critiqued a villain in a comic book movie on this channel. You know, maybe I owe them all an apology because Ezekiel just takes the cake and there's not that much of a competition. I don't know what they originally had planned for this guy, but it is very clearly not what we ended up with on screen. That's no secret because this movie contains maybe the worst ADR I've ever heard in a major studio release. The replacement dialogue is so obvious and there is so much of it. They avoid showing Ezekiel's face as much as they can to make all that ADR a little less obvious, which by the way it definitely is, and when they show him speaking, it is a complete disaster. It honestly reminds me of watching Rita Repulsa in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but Power Rangers had a lot of low budget kids TV charm and never made any secret of dubbing its characters. This is a fairly big budget movie that isn't going for that at all, so it's pretty embarrassing. And you can tell all the Ezekiel stuff was revamped at the last minute because everything about the character that's not him as a threat in the action set pieces feels absolutely stripped to the bone. Like there is nothing to this character. So when he's hunting down the teens, he's got this assistant played by Zausha Mamet from Girls, whose role I just have to think was larger at some point. Like, I don't know why you hire her for this tiny, completely thankless role otherwise. And because the movie is constantly trying to work around her scene partner's dialogue, and I'm guessing they did some reshoots with her to stitch together the plot, it ends up feeling like her and Ezekiel actor Tahar Rahim are on completely different sets. All of this is not helped by the fact that Rahim's 80 yard line readings are just notably awful. They sound like someone doing a Dark Knight Joker impression in a YouTube skit. It's just brutal to get through. And these aren't the only actors who I feel like were originally going to be used very differently. Like what in the world was going on with Emma Roberts in this movie, playing Peter Parker's pregnant mom? This was an absolutely nothing role. It added up to nothing, there was zero purpose behind this character being in this movie. The whole Peter Parker connection was just entirely pointless and honestly really creatively bankrupt and shameless. Like, okay, Adam Scott's Uncle Ben and Emma Roberts' Mary Parker could have been cut out of this story completely and it wouldn't have mattered. But even on the less important fanboy level of just like, hey, I'll see this movie because maybe it'll have some interesting tie to Spider-Man or tell me about his backstory and his family, it was a huge letdown. Like, what did this have to tell us about Ben or Mary Parker as people? That Uncle Ben was, I don't know, nice? That Mary's baby shower was a little boring? I was honestly shocked by how little impact they actually had. I like Emma Roberts as an actor and Adam Scott has been one of my favorite TV actors and YouTube centric podcast hosts for years, but they just didn't need to be here, especially when the film is trying so hard to sell us on this growing friendship between the leads that never materialized in any interesting or meaningful way. The four main characters, Cassie, Anya, Maddie, and Julia, left 
a lot to be desired. I could go into their comic book counterparts a bit here, but honestly, the connection feels so loose and unimportant that I don't even think that's really worth it. I think the single biggest reason that people will feel ripped off walking out of this movie well, okay, there are a lot of reasons, but to pick one, it's that despite the trailer showing our leads in spider costumes doing superhero-y stuff, there's not a single real moment of that in the movie. It's all these flashes into the future shot in a very gauzy style. On one hand, I can see why they might have felt these were important. The fact that the three teen girls will get powers at some undetermined point in the future is kind of the only thing holding this flimsy plot together, with Ezekiel trying to eliminate them for what they'll do to him down the line. Add in the Mother Guardian figure, and it's all a bit like Terminator 2, but you know, without any of the excitement or the immaculate action set pieces, but I do get showing that they become heroes later on. But I cannot emphasize enough how little importance these flash forwards actually play to our cast. They don't even get a real sense of this destiny until the final scene, in which they all kind of laugh and shrug it off. There's no moment where these three wayward lonely teens have to come to terms with the fact that they have this incredibly important future that a supernatural threat is trying to kill them over. We don't get much of them adjusting to the fact that their lives will never be the same again or learning to trust Cassie more. Aside from some C-grade teen drama style snark, they're basically on board from the beginning. And the movie really tries to emphasize their friendship. I can see the thought process here. You have three wildly different teens united by their lack of a real family. And you have the flaky Cassie who now finds herself being a mother figure to them despite the fact that she's lived her life very isolated and emotionally closed off. I'm going to pay this movie a compliment here and say that despite all the changes they've made to the source material, this setup could work fine. There's an emotional core there that you could build off of, seeing these four very different women learn to trust each other and find some solace and sense of belonging in a new family. Original? No, but it's at least something you can hang your hat on. The biggest issue there is the screenplay from the writers of Power Rangers 2017, which I actually covered in a past video by the way. It just doesn't handle any of this well at all. It's clunky and incredibly obvious in the way that it handles its characters. With the girls getting driven out to a campsite and then immediately all sharing their sad backstories with each other one after another, almost like they were on a reality show. And the characters don't feel like fleshed out three or honestly two dimensional ones. Everyone kind of has their one thing that they stick to. Maddie is the confident teen who knows she's always right, she loves skateboarding, and hates authority. She starts that way, she ends that way, and there's very little reflection or change that happens throughout the story. I guess you could say she learns to trust others more, maybe. It's no fault of the actor, there's just not much here. The character has the depth of an Eat My Shorts Bart Simpson t-shirt. And our lead, played by Dakota Johnson, is not much better. In fact, no, no, that's unfair. She's worse. She's much worse. Say what you will about the poorly written teen characters, all three of those actors showed up and tried to make the best of it. Johnson seems like she sleepwalked through this role, which makes sense as she's been tackling the press tour for Madam Web with all the enthusiasm of a hungover barista at 6.15 in the morning. Except, you know, if the barista was getting paid millions of dollars. And look, I don't want to come off like a bitter fan here. I don't actually care if Dakota Johnson can't name any of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies or whatever, but she's really bad in the actual movie and that's where I take issue. She didn't make a single interesting choice with this character. She dragged down any scene that tried to create a sense of emotional weight with her completely flat, affectless line readings. It's hard for me to find a single nice thing to say about this performance. I guess I kinda liked the gag where she tried and failed to climb up a wall like Spider-Man, but you know, that's pretty far from enough. You give any other woman in this movie the Madam Web role, whether it's the three other leads, Emma Roberts, whoever, it's instantly a little better. Once again though, the screenplay is doing her absolutely no favors. There's this awful section in the movie where she goes back to where her mother died in Peru and she goes on this like mystical mind quest where she sees that no, her mom didn't hate her, she cared about her and she was trying to do right by her while also saving lives by researching these spiders. Now, in a competent script, and I don't even mean good, I just mean like baseline level of screenplay functionality, this would emotionally and cleanly tie back into Cassie's choice to embrace becoming the person that these teens need her to be. 
With this burden lifted, she'd be able to embrace the side of herself that she's trying to push away and become the mother figure that she is at the end of the movie. Now, that all ends up happening, but it's not this emotional revelation that does it. It's kind of beating up a guy on a rooftop and throwing a Pepsi sign on him. This whole thing is just so sloppy, and that's not even mentioning how bad a lot of the actual dialogue is. I know this couldn't have been the original intent, and I'm fascinated, like I said, to eventually find out what happened here. In the end, Madam Web is a terrible movie that radiates complete contempt for its audience. If this is what studios feel like people will accept in their superhero movies, it's no wonder they feel like they're on a steep decline right now. This is just unacceptable. Maybe there was an interesting vision here somewhere, at some point, but the final film is a cynical product created to satisfy absolutely no one. And it's not even so bad it's good or it's fun or whatever. It's just bad. Look, was Madam Web perfect? No, but hey, neither are we. I mean, we can always work to improve. Something that can be a big part of that is brilliant. Brilliant helps you tackle math, science, and computer science concepts like AI and neural networks in a fun way that always fits into your schedule. Even if you can only spare 15 minutes a day on a computer, tablet, or even your phone. One I love to recommend to people is Everyday Math because it's so fun and a great introduction to everything Brilliant has to offer. I think where Brilliant really shines is it helps you discover the pace and style of learning that works for you and your learning in a highly interactive way. There are thousands of lessons here and they're always adding new ones. Not only is this a really intuitive way to learn, it helps build learning into your day in a way that fits your own personal schedule. So go to Brilliant.org slash Midnight and try it for free with a 30-day free trial. The first 200 people to go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. That's Brilliant.org slash Midnight. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started. Because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.